I'm Richard Dodd, and you're listening to the Ecology Academy podcast. This is a show where we get to talk and learn about all things ecological, including interviews with top ecologists, both employers and employees, those working with ecologists, and also aspiring and inspiring career-seeking individuals setting out to make a difference. The show aims to provide you with insights, advice, and inspiration to help you succeed and excel as an effective ecologist and to make a real difference to our natural environment. Hello and welcome to the final episode of 2021 on the Ecology Academy podcast. I can't believe I'm saying that. It's the end of the year. It is now almost Christmas. This is the final episode just going out before Christmas itself. I just want to say thank you so much for the feedback I've received. Uh, it's been it's been delightful in terms of um, knowing that people are actually listening, which is always good <laughs> itself. So I'm going to give you a little bit of statistics about the number of people that are downloading these shows, listening to the, these podcasts, and also bringing up to speed about which, which ones have been the most popular. So something that, I mean, yeah, I may be sticking my neck on a line here to say which ones have been the most downloadable. I'm not saying they're better. I'm just saying the most downloadable episodes we've had on the podcast but before you switch off as well I've got some actionable items that I want you to take forward perhaps review reflect upon and take action ready for an exciting 2022 and hopefully we will be in a much better position um, to actually achieve our objectives for 2022 and but before we do that I just want to like a quick review of the year now we started these podcasts back in June 2021. And why did we start to put these together? Well, I found out that there was there was relatively few podcasts out there which sort of filled a void was you know, filled an area where I'm interested in terms of learning about what ecologists do, um, where they do it, and why they do it as well how they build their careers, how they're engaging in those careers, how do they start their careers. So it was just an it was just an exercise for me to gain a lot more information about um, about our sector, about our wonderful people who work within ecology. So it was purely selfish reasons, and put that together, and it seems to have t- captured the imagination of quite a few of you. So I'm pleased to say. So thank you so much for not only downloading these episodes, but also taking the time to listen to them and comment upon the downloads as well, the the the, the podcasts. Now. I've got a lot of, uh, well, I, I, I've got a long way to go in terms of actually perfecting these. I don't think they'll ever be perfect, but I've learned a lot about myself and increasing my confidence. So um, that's really, really helped me. So the podcast has helped me. So if, if, if out of everyone else, it's helped one person, and that's my, uh, in, you know, my individual self here. And I'm getting better, so I do apologise for all the ums and ahs and that go out through these podcasts. It is quite raw, and hopefully that makes it a little bit more real and realistic. I mean, because, um, yes, there's a little bit of a script I stick to during the interviews, for instance, but it's mostly free-flowing, so hopefully that comes across. So I just wanted to thank you so much for taking time to listen to those podcasts. Now, this show is nothing without you guys, so what I'd like you to do if possible, is to share this amongst your friends, colleagues, uh, uh, the wider the wider society, just to see you know if, if a career in ecology is for someone. Um, you pass it on to them, that's so we can actually they can learn about a lot about what ecological consultants do or ecologists do, should I say? The different roles and sort of the requirements, the skills, and so forth. But also listening to some great people who are already within our sector making great waves and you know, actually excelling, excelling what they do um, in terms of their own experience, their skills, and trying to promote that within us or our sector. But as I said, we're going to review this. We're also going to give you some actionable items for you to take forward. doesn't matter where you are on your career as an ecologist. It could be right at the start of your career. You could be a mid-career ecologist or someone who's a little bit more veteran and actually looking to uh, maybe take that to the next level. So wherever that may be. But I, first of all, let, let's, let's begin with 2021. 
It's been a challenging year. I think that's probably an understatement. I've, I found it qu- quite difficult and quite challenging in terms of running a and managing a business. But also on a personal front, it has been quite challenging in terms of managing you know, relationships at home with fr- friends and family as well. And I think we can all say that we've shared that experience. Some have thrived in this environment. Some certainly have not. And I think, you know, we're there for everyone, really. We're we're trying to be there for uh, for everyone. So if you are uh, struggling, hopefully these podcasts will make some difference to you. And um, we'd like to hear from you as well about, um, you know, if they have helped you, how have they helped you? And you know what action have you taken? So I just want to quickly review sort of the, the episodes we've had over 2021, and there's been you know 14 uh, episodes in total throughout the year. And I just want to give you a review of sort of the the, the most downloadable uh, episodes we've had. So this does not mean that they're the best; it just means that the most. I think it's the topic that's actually captured the imagination of people. So I just want to run through those with you now. Going back to September, I had the privilege of interviewing one of my colleagues, um, Ivy Zabuva. And Ivy is an amazing person. She is a principal ecologist at Wildwood Ecology. And it was fantastic to sit in the same room as, as Ivy, having a conversation about what it makes a great senior ecologist. And that episode has received the most downloads. So um, I'm going to say it's been out since September. So episode seven, what makes a great senior ecologist? That was the most downloadable episode of so far. So, you know, things may sway. I may sway your decision now. You may actually go out there and promote um, a, a different podcast, but uh, a different episode. So, uh, so you know, at the moment, number seven seems to be make what makes a great senior ecologist the most downloadable one. Followed by... Um, it was Building Brand and Culture. That was an interview I had with Rob Boats of Arbtech back in July, one of the first interviews um, I had with a an owner of a, an ecological consultancy. And that was a great interview uh, with Rob there, you know, talking about uh, the culture, you know, how he started his company, how he's taken it and grown it. And, um, you know, that it was an, just an insight into someone who has... You know, a completely different uh, mindset than my own, and I, I think it was quite interesting to just to see where Rob comes from in terms of growing his business, his multiple businesses as well. So that was a really interesting one. That was back in July in of this year. And that was episode number five. So building brand and culture. That was an interview with Rob Oates of Obtech. Thirdly, um, we go, we jump forward to October, and that was the interview with Sally Haynes, the chief executive of the Chartered Institute of Ecology and Environmental Management. That was number eight. So let's go back to October. We talked about Sally's career, about how she got the role as a chief executive, how Saeem are taking things forward, and also pronouncing the word Saeem. There we go. Yeah, we've, we've learned something about how to pronounce Saeem. So that was a really interesting conversation I had with um, Sally back in, in October. Um, Fourthly, okay, on the fourth uh, most downloadable episode was an Every Site Matters. And that was an interview with Marcus Kohler of MKA Ecology. And that was released in August of 2021. That was a great interview too um, with, with Marcus. Um, I met him at the, the Autumn Conference of Siam as well. And um, he's a great guy. His heart is right in the right place. And it is very true, you know, that, um, you know, very much about... Um, you know, we talked about exploitation within ecological, uh, ecological consultancies, building better for our, our own sort of uh, industry as well. So that was a really insightful podcast. And I would say back in, that was back in August. So that was episode number six. And I'm just going to say the next one. OK, a very relatively new podcast. In fact, I think it was, it's only been out for a few weeks. And that was episode number 13 the Dog Detectors, an interview with Rachel uh, Favel uh, from Paws for Conservation. I've got to make sure I get uh, Rachel's surname correct because it's not Flavel uh, as it looks like, but it's um, Flavel. Uh, so uh, I, I, I'm sure Rachel's going to correct me if that's wrong again. Um, but that received, I mean, a, 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 yeah, a huge amount of support from our community in terms of um, you know downloads and people listening to that podcast relatively early on so i can imagine that's going to shoot up in terms of the number of downloads so i may be talking about this time you know next year that's actually that may, may feature extremely high 
So I just want to give you a quick insight into that. So the top five. So those are the most top five, the top five sort of um, most downloadable episodes. So um, so go back and what's your favorite? I mean, those that say the top five that's been downloaded and commented upon. So just wanted to um, uh, just point those out and give you an insight into what episodes really resonate with our community. So is that true to you? If not, let me know. Um, email me at richard at ecologyacademy.co.uk. Tell me what was your favourite episode and why. Um, okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about sort of challenges and successes in 2021. So I'm going to ask you a few questions and perhaps, I mean, we can do a little bit of journaling together. So perhaps um, if you do have a pen and paper to hand, make sure you make a note of sort of these sort of questions and maybe review and, and you know, reflect upon them and just see what you've achieved this year. And then we can go into sort of looking at what we can achieve in 2022. And there could be really small wins. Absolutely nothing wrong with actually, you know, any sort of win this year. Uh, I'm sure you can can go back, stretch your, cast your mind back to earlier parts of this year, uh, what obstacles you've overcome, how you did it, and those successes there. So it may not be something, you know, you've um, obtained uh, itself in terms of a material, um, uh, 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 anything material, but it could be something that you've overcome yourself, some over, uh, overcoming some sort of a, a challenge. So it could be, for instance, that you completed your degree despite the difficulties uh, for those new, you know, new methods and of actually learning. So I, I lecture at the Royal Agriculture University, and we obviously switched between face-to-face learning to it was fully online in early parts of 2020 and first half of 2021 and then it's switched to a sort of blended so we're recorded as well as sort of a face-to-face time and the challenges that really really does bring to anyone learning a subject especially at a, at a higher degree level so perhaps you completed your degree and it could be an undergraduate degree master's degree phd um, you know, whatever that is, it's fantastic. I say this is um, it's been a very challenging time to do that. Or it could be securing your first role as a, as a full time or permanent ecologist. So if you have done that, fantastic, well done. Let us know about where your role, where that role is, and uh, who it's with, what you've learned so far. Is it living up to your expectations? So write some of these down. So you know, so yeah, a small wins. This is going to be these are going to be your big wins here. It could be getting a promotion within your company, or maybe a promotion to a new company. Now we can have a, a great conversation about. Um, uh, uh, about staying with a company versus uh, the grass is always greener on the other side, you know, and and it opens that debate about salaries and uh, obviously the vision and values of a certain company, the ethics of a company. What is it that makes you stay with a company? What makes you move on? You know, it could be uh, it could be financial, it could be actually relationships, um, it could be you know that you want to that they don't offer you enough challenges, or it actually could be, actually, my company's fantastic. They support me throughout everything. They've um, overcome a lot of the um, challenges I've personally faced, and that's the reason why you've actually remained loyal to them um, themselves. And I think we're getting better as employers to actually trying to retain talent within our own companies. So it could be, if moving through sort of um, your progression now, it could be that you've winning a new client that client you've been nurturing for the past year actually has come to fruition and you've uh, you know you, you know, you're working with them they you're getting on great with them and you know they really love what you do and um, get you as a person as well as you and, and with your company as well or it could be uh, conversely losing a needy and maybe an uh, sort of um uh, 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 yeah, a, a, a pain in the backside client. Now, sometimes we hang on to these because it's better the devil you know, but um, sometimes it is right to let a client go because you may not be serving them to their best interest. Um, so, you know, the, the, you, know you, you don't get the benefit from them and they're not going to get the benefit either. So they may be better suited to another client. So don't think about having this fear of losing a client. Think about actually promote, you know, from, from their point of view, you want to get the best for them. And so actually pointing them in a different direction may be of benefit to both you and to them. So it's a win-win situation. It could be overcoming a recruitment um, challenge. Now, 2021 and 2020 have been extremely challenging in terms of from a recruitment uh, point of view. You know, we can talk about this great 
this skills gap we have within our industry, um, particularly about senior level of the staff. And th- this is something that I think we need to really address. And we've got a couple of ideas. And if you go into our Ecology Academy, uh, 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 Ecology Academy website there, there are some opportunities there for people to learn more and gain more as a senior ecologist. We've got a program to put together for senior leaders. And we've also got a package there for companies to actually help develop their own team within their company as well. So actually a bespoke course there. So, but um, I think it's something that sector, as a sector, we really need to address. Uh, and also, it, it could be something that uh, you know we've learned something new about ourselves. So we could be. And I've learned a lot about myself about these podcasts, for instance. That um, it is it is quite challenging sitting down uh, as I'm doing now, <laughs> staring at a computer. No one's in front of me. Look, you know, recording my voice and uh, just thinking. You know, there's a lot of fears that go through. Going out, how do I sound? Is it coming across right? What people, what people's thoughts and opinions of me? When actually, you know, I'm trying to get over that. It's the messages I'm trying to get across, and I may not be doing it perfectly. In fact, it's far from perfect. But I'm I'm trying to get that you know trying to increase the awareness of our industry, the people within our industry, the wonderful work we do as a, as a community. So this is something that I'm quite passionate about, and I'm only going to get better at it. Well, I, could, <laughs> I hope to get better at this and serve you more on this Ecology Academy podcast. So that's a sort of quick review of 2021. So. If you do, uh, journaling is fantastic. And I, this is something I've started in the past year t- with, with, uh, uh, with with sort of an emphasis on, you know, uh, actually getting things down up on paper. Now, you could use a journal uh, that's on a, on a laptop, uh, uh, you know, sorry, um, an, app, an application, an app to do this. I just tend to use pen and paper. Um, I got, uh, if the thoughts come cl- more clearly to me, and I spend most of the time look staring at a computer anyway, so I want to move away from that. And that's the reason why I sort of journal in on paper using a, a pen and paper. And um, I need to get a new one. So this is not a hint. This is not for you to send me any any sort of journals or any blank pieces of paper or, or books. But I, I'm going to get a new journal for 2022. And my what I'm going to do next year, just as a, just so you're aware, is I'm going to, this journal. I'm going to use it in two different ways. So um, I'm going to put down all my, all the positive things that happened to me on one uh, at the start of the book. Okay, so everything that positive happens to me, that's going to go in date. What were, what was the win? How did you know? And also, how did it come about? How did it manifest? And and how it made me feel? So that, that's going to be like a sort of. Um, uh, yeah, a, a very positive uh, a way to do things, and, and I can reflect back upon that. Maybe I'll talk about this in December 2022. Now, and then I'm going to reverse it, and on the back of that, it's going to be all my meetings. Then, so with discussions with people I've had, interviews, sort of um, commentary I've had with uh, members of my own team put all those things down, build it up and see what the commonalities are throughout the year as well. What did we talk about? What did we discuss? What did we actually achieve? Was it just, I, I don't want to just write things down and not action, you know, action or execute upon the sort of um, actions from our conversations, obviously just wasted energy. So I want to make sure that I can go back through that book, look at things that um, that um, were mentioned maybe a month or two or three or even longer ago and go, actually, what did I do to achieve that? So there you go. That's what I'm going to do for 2022. A little bit of journaling. All, one about all positive wins. And then, then the other side is about uh, all the action points I can take away and just look at common ad- commonalities. So what I want to leave you with as we're going through the next few minutes is what is your plan for 2022? So what have you decided or what will you decide to do and achieve in 2022? It's a great opportunity, obviously, to reflect back upon what you have achieved in 2021. And as we go into the new year to plan and not talk about New Year's resolutions, Okay, these are actual um, items that you really do want to achieve in 2022. And in order to do that, this is just my input here. This is just one thing. But one thing that really helps me is to have one focus for the year, one big goal for that year. Now, to break that down a little bit further, that could be one big goal for family, one big goal for friends. It could be financial. You know, what do you want to achieve um, throughout um, 2022? It could be health. It could be uh, um, 
you know, what do you want to improve or what do you want to uh, ensure that, you know, that, that, you know, you can go forward? Is it your you know, mental health? Is it your physical health? Is it both that you want to achieve, uh, you know, big within 2022 and get on top of? Is it your career? And clearly the Ecology Academy podcast is about careers, but it's also about the mindset as well. So about how you go about achieving those, those careers. So what career do you, are you looking for? Is it promotion and so forth? And so we'll, we'll look about one big action itemable, actionable item there. Experiences. Let's not forget about, you know, we've missed out on a lot in 2020, 2021 of experiences. Now, these experiences could be going to see a show. It could be going to go and, uh, to, you know, to go to the top of a mountain, for instance, hot air balloon, whatever it is. And I, I, I personally got one. My, I'll give you a bit of an insight, a bit of a personal insight here. So, so my, um, uh, my daughter would be getting married in April in 2022. And uh, so that's going to be an experience for me. But I've never, I've, I've never, never, obviously never been uh, sort of the the, uh, the father of the, the bride before. And this is going to be a fantastic opportunity for, for me, amazing experience. Um, but also, I'm doing this after uh, my daughter gets married, by the way, is that for my, I turned 50 this year. And one thing that's been given to me, I'm very grateful for this, is um, to, to go tandem skydiving. Now, it's something that... Um, I, I don't think I've ever mooted the idea that I, I wanted to do this, but I think, uh, you know, it's something I, I'm up for, a bit of a challenge, definitely experience. So what experiences are you, I mean, it could be something really, really, uh, a really, really simple, just experience actually hearing, uh, I don't know, birdsong in Scotland. It could be hearing um, or, or watching dolphins, a pod of dolphins off the coast of Cornwall or, uh, or Ireland. Um, so, you know, it, what experience are you going to um, look forward to in 2022? Uh, so it could be, it doesn't have to be financially, you know, I was, I was given this skydiving experience, but um, it could be something that you just want to do yourself. And equally so, final art thing to focus upon, maybe careers, is, oh, sorry, not careers, is your goal setting, is things and stuff. Now, that sounds quite materialistic, but what 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 is it you want in 2022? Now, I put down a goal earlier on in the year, January 2021, that one of my things and stuff I wanted uh, was actually a new trombone. And I say a, tr- a trombone, I, I've been playing trombone since I was probably 12 years old. And the instruments I've always had, I have either been the schools. Um, I, 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 a little bit more about me was that I was a professional musician within the military. And so it was technically the Queen's instrument I played during my time as a bandsman in the British Army. Um, but um, And then I moved, uh, then I had a massive break of not uh, performing at all, and only took back up trombone in about four, no, well, about five or six years ago. And that was an instrument loaned to me by the band. So after all these years, after, you know, since it was tw- you know, a good, good 40, you know, uh, 32 years, um, 38 years of um, having borrowed someone else's instruments, I actually bought my own trombone. And that was really big for me. I mean, it was um, I, I mean, it just just something I was quite overwhelmed, really, with, with it. So what things so, so thing can make us feel good. You know, so there was a need for there. I'm not saying about buying the stuff for just for the sake of it. But uh, yeah, so just run through those again. So what is your plan? What is your plan for 2022? Whether that be for family and friends, financial, health, career an experience or is it things and stuff you want itself and um, focus upon one element you may put down three or four okay then look at that list about three or four different actionable items there you know what you want to achieve within 2022 focus upon the one thing that's yeah, that that you want to achieve and it could be just one out of all those items there or it could be one of each okay uh, i'll leave that up to you okay but um what is the one thing so this time next year you're going to look back and say yep yeah, i did that i achieved that i got my goal i completed my goal now there's some questions that you can ask yourself while you're doing that so first of all why is it important to you to achieve that goal why is it important to you to achieve that goal? And, and why is it really important for you to achieve that goal? And I'm going to be repeating myself here. But sometimes you go, I just want it. But why? What? It, what is it behind just wanting something? Is it you want it? You need it? What is the root cause behind it? And I think that once you start answering those questions, you go, oh, yeah. You know, actually, you might change it. It may be you, you thought, oh, I wanted... Um, 
I wanted to secure, I wanted to get a, um, you know, uh, a, 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 a learn a, a new course on, uh, um, I, I don't know, cryptocurrency, for instance. I don't know why, but you've got to go, what's the reason behind it? And so you have a look at that r- the real root cause, the real root reasons for it. Also, what will help you, another question to ask yourself, sort of coach yourself question, would be who can help you achieve that goal? Okay, so I'm going to move away from the cryptocurrency analogy there, uh, sort of um, task there. But it could be, okay, if you want to secure a position as a senior ecologist, who's going to help you? Is it people within your company? Is it people externally? Is it family and friends? People are already a senior ecologist. How can they help you achieve that role as well? Is it something you want to achieve? So why is it important to you? Who can help you achieve that goal itself? And... um, also, how can you achieve that goal? Okay, so just a slight difference there. So who can help you, but also how can how can you achieve this goal? So what measures, what instruments do you need? What tools do you need, resources, to actually achieve that goal? And also by when? So it could be that you break this big goal down into smaller chunks, manageable chunks. And you're going, actually, within quarter one of 2022, I'm going to achieve this, as in just knowledge and experience and learning a bit more about, about what this big subject is. And then by maybe quarter three, so you're looking about around about September 2022, that's when you're going to sort of hit, to, you know, that's when you're going to achieve the goal itself. And you can break, let's say, you break that big, this, I mean, it may seem a huge goal, for instance, but you really do need to break it down into smaller manageable chunks and, and, and commit to the time within you know, these, these manageable areas. And we use quarterly, so, uh, so 12-week blocks, for instance. So what am I going to, how can I achieve that in quarter one, quarter two, and quarter three, so forth? Another good question to ask, you, ask yourself is, what will prevent me? What will hinder me from achieving this goal? So you identify what you need what resources you need to actually achieve the goal, but what prevents you? What 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 risks are out there that will actually make you um, less successful? Actually, not achieve this goal, and let's not let's not shy away from this. You know, um, we can talk about failure, and failure can be a good thing in terms of it. Just you know, it highlights to us what we need to do differently next time. So, but what things may prevent us from achieving our goal? Now, usually it's, yeah, we can think about, you know, money for it, if it's courses, for instance, or actually if it's a material thing, how am I going to get that money? And you may have to solve other problems uh, at getting to that goal. But you're identifying what, what risks do I face actually not achieving my goal? So they go, money may be one, clearly time is the other resource. And, you know, yeah, we can build up money over, uh, uh, we can build up money, but what things, one thing that we cannot um, claw back is time. So you need to be deliberate with your time. And this is the reason why we try to break things down into sort of chunks, you know, manageable chunks. Uh, something seems overwhelming if you say, I'm going to achieve that in 12 months time. But if you, in one big goal in 12 months, but if you break it down to stages, it makes it a little bit more manageable. Be very constructive with your time. How are you going to do that? And also, you've got to be really, really honest with yourself. Another, another sort of factor that can hinder your plans is you. And it could be like through self-sabotage, for instance, that you don't believe you deserve this. You don't believe that actually you can achieve it. Um, you don't believe that actually it's necessary uh, itself. Or m- people may perceive you differently if you did obtain this goal. Look at yourself. I mean, are you uh, a limiting factor in order, you know, are you self-sabotaging yourself um, and all those other questions, as I said before, about um, getting people to help you, finding out information, why do you really want to do this? These are those questions that you can help actually determine if you're going to sort of, um, if you are going to be the limiting factor in, in sort of um, achieving your goal. And that's it. It's going to be a really shorter episode than this month. Uh, so it is Christmas. I wish you all the best for Christmas for you, your loved ones, friends, family. Keep safe. Keep well. I hope that's been of interest to you. And in terms of going forward for next year, please do let me know what you would like to hear on these shows going forward. Who would you like me to interview? I'll just give you an example as well. We will... Um, 
I am looking for a co-host. So it's rather than, you know, as much as I'm sure you love listening to my own voice uh, on these podcasts, there's probably going to be people a lot better than I can do at this. Um, But uh, I'd like to also, uh, you know, collaborate, share um, and obtain new stories out there, new interviews, new insights using people who can actually submit their um their material to us and we can put it on the ecology academy website uh the, the podcast itself so if you would like to collaborate please do it in touch if there's something you would like to say actually do you know what richard you should do less of this let me know what should we do more of what should we change please do let me know other than that i do wish you the very happy healthy and safe christmas and a wonderful and exciting new year